I'll go over some of those. Some people did ask some, uh, some questions, which I will address, but nothing is. Um, so for those of you that already put in a question, I will address those. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, again, you guys follow my steps. Plot the information. That's the best way to that's the best way to understand what exactly you're trying to do, as well as to determine if the major axis is horizontal or vertical. So, main important thing I want you guys to understand is when I have zero plus or minus three, what that all that means is I have the point zero comma three and zero comma negative three. Zero plus or minus two just means I have zero comma two and zero comma negative two. That's all it means. So if I go and plot those points. 0, 3, 1, 2, 3. Now, the other thing you'd want to do is label your points as well. Foci. So, remember that, remember that line that I drew, right? The major axis has to lie. The major axis goes through your vertices, your foci, and your center. So, we plotted the information, step one. Step two, determine if it's a horizontal or vertical major axis. So does it look like my major axis is going vertical or horizontal? Vertical, right? Not too bad. So why is that important? Because now that I know it's vertical, I know should A be under the x or should A be under the y? Under the y. So my equation that I'm going to use is x minus h squared over b squared equals, I'm sorry, plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. Okay. I really need you to stop talking when I'm speaking, OK? Thank you. Um, so that's the equation. Does everybody understand? Yes? No? There's only two. It's either vertical or horizontal. So the A is under the X or the A is under the B. Yes? How do you know which formula it would be? If the major axis is vertical, that means the value of A is under the Y. If your major axis was horizontal, the A and B would have been swapped. Do you have a question, please? OK. All right. Now, next step. We need to identify the center. Now, if you guys remember, we created those two dots. Remember, we found the center by just finding the midpoint, right? Because what's important, when you guys look at that graph, the center is halfway between the two vertices, it's halfway between the two foci, and it's halfway between the two co-vertices, right? It's midpoint. So we have two vertices, we have two foci. Can we find the center? Yeah, it's right in the middle. That's why graphing it is helpful. You don't have to graph it. But I think it's very helpful. So I'll write down the center is 0, 0. Now remember, what does the center represent? That's your hk, right? And that's in your formulas that we wrote in. Now the next thing is we need to figure out a and b. Well, the distance from the center to your vertice is a. Now it could be positive and it could be negative. Actually, it's going to be both every single time. But we're not talking about direction. We're just talking about length. So the distance from center to your vertice, the absolute length is 3. Now b, I don't know b, right? b is the distance from the center to your co-vertices. I don't have any co-vertices here, correct? So um, yes? So how do you get that into distance? Because remember, a is the distance from the center to your vertice. Oh, okay. So 1, 2, 3, so that's common. Um, however, I do have the foci. So the distance from the center to the foci is 2, which is c. All right. Now, again, I need to find b. The equation has a and b. I don't have b. I don't really need c. But c is helpful because if I have a and c, there is an equation c squared equals a squared minus b squared. If I have two of those, can I figure out the third? Yeah, of course I can. So I have 2 squared equals 3 squared minus b squared. And now I just need to solve. Now, a big mistake a lot of students make is they go ahead and solve for b. Ladies and gentlemen, in this problem, we don't need to solve for b. Because what is the equation looking for? We just want b squared, right? So we're good. So now I can just plug in h and k, which is x minus 0 squared over b squared, which is 5, plus y minus 0 squared over a squared. Now, in this case, a is 3, so a squared is going to be 9 equals 1. And in reality, ladies and gentlemen, we don't really need to write the x minus 0. I just did that so you guys can see plugging in h and k. But in reality, the simplified form would be x squared over 5 plus 
y squared over 9 equals numeral length. And that's it.